All right, we'll do our warm ups. I'm sure you can do that, Vince. And then we will just do a few standing postures and see where we go. So get your feet straight ahead. As you bend your knees, they should sort of go towards your second toes, not out to the sides or in toward each other. Ankles, knees, hips, shoulders stack up, shoulders back and down. And keep those shoulders and shoulder blades moving down toward your waist throughout the practice so that your spine stretches. So the base of your skull, base of your spine, move apart, ground toward the ceiling. Get your core activated. So pull your ribs toward your spine and then lift them up toward your heart. And just feel that core area supporting your lower back. Spread your toes out, no gripping with the toes at all. And just sink evenly into the front and back of your foot. Shoulders relaxing, crown reaching up. Close your eyes, just focus inward, find your yoga perspective. And just keep that inner focus throughout. And then as you inhale, bring your arms to shoulder level. Keep the shoulders bowed down as you stretch out through your fingertips. Exhale, bring your hands to your chest, elbows slightly back, keeping your heart open. Inhale, arms stretch out to the front, but again, keep the shoulders away from your ears. And then exhale, the hands behind you, just clasp your fingers together gently and push them down. Lift your heart and look up, stretching your head back, so a nice little upper body back bend. And then pivot at your hips, exhale over. Head down toward the floor, hands up toward the ceiling. Lift your sitting bones, those two protrusions of sit up, and get the stretch on the back of your legs. Move your chin around, loosen up your neck, circle it both ways. And then bend your knees, and from the bottom of the spine, wind your way all the way back up, and again, into a nice little upper body back bend, lifting your heart. Shoulders down, head back, spread your toes. And then inhale, upright, release your arms. Back in mountain pose, just take a moment, feel the circulation along the back of your body. Noticing that inward reaction is the yoga practice. And again, inhale, arms reaching out at shoulder level. Hands to your heart, elbows back. Stretch to the front, keep the shoulders down, and then clasp your hands the other way behind you. So shift the fingers one position over, other finger outside. Again, lift the heart into a nice upper body back bend. Pivot at your hips as you exhale over. And again, just hang there, letting things stretch a little through the back of your body. Sitting bones up, letting the Pull, stretch from the feet all the way through the sitting bones, through the shoulders, hands toward your head for a little shoulder work. And then again, knees bending, chin slightly in, ribs up and sitting bones down, wind from the bottom of the spine to the top. And again, a nice upper body back bend. Stretch it out, keep breathing. And then inhale upright, release your arms. And again, back in mountain pose, just take a moment, noticing how your body is responding. And we're gonna stretch the sides. So bring your arms again to shoulder level, turn the palms up, shoulders down, and then bring your hands right above your shoulders. Pass them, turn them, and clasp. And then bring your arms back by your ears. So everything stays straight on this one, hips and shoulders facing the front. And lean over to one side, just letting those ribs expand as that opposite side contracts. Push the foot you're leaning away from down and out through your head and your fingertips. Get that opening through the side. Inhale back upright, shoulders still down, switch the other hand to the front. Again, pull the arms by your ears, stretch it out straight and long, lean to the other side. Ribs opening as you push the foot, you're leaning away from down and the hands away. Make sure you're not leaning the shoulder forward so you can look up slightly toward the ceiling if that helps. And then inhale back to the center. Exhale your arms back down. Feel the sides a little bit more open. Shoulders back and down, back into mountain pose. 
So we're gonna do a twist, and for twists, you always want your spine really stretched open. So the base of the spine and the base of the skull need to stretch apart and really lengthen. Arms again to shoulder level, palms up, hands above your shoulders. Remember that shoulders stay down and clasp your elbows. Spread your toes, stretch your whole spine apart and exhale over to one side in a twist. Take a breath, keep the weight on both feet and exhale, pivoting over. So even while you're pivoted to one side, see if you can keep the weight on both feet evenly. Keep your arms next to your ears. Just pull your head toward your leg as much as you want. And then keeping the weight on both feet, stay in your twist, work your way back all the way up. And then, especially in the twist, only go into the upper body for the back bend. So lift your heart, pull your elbows back, shoulders down, and just breathe. And make sure no pressure in that low back when you're twisting. Inhale back up to the top and exhale around to the center. Switch your arms around, balancing things out. And again, shoulders down, crown high, stretch the spine apart and exhale to the opposite twist. Another breath in and as you exhale, come on over. Just relaxing into that twist forward bend. Check your weight, make sure it's on both feet as evenly as you can. Keep the arms by your ears and inhale your way all the way up. Lift your heart, pull your elbows back, shoulder blades towards your waist and that upper body back bend. Take a breath, just keep lengthening. And then inhale upright, exhale around to the center. Keep your shoulders down, but bring your fingertips to the ceiling in that extended mountain pose. So everything is straight, ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, fingertips. Reach the crown up, sitting bones down. And then we're gonna swan dive forward. So bring your hands out to shoulder level, palms toward the floor. Pivot at that hip joint and just bring your back parallel to the floor as much as you can. So knees straight, elbows straight, spine straight. Everything stretching out. And then just drop down into ragdoll, hanging arms toward, hands toward the floor. Take a moment there, lift your sitting bones, stretching the back of your legs. You can bring your hands behind your calves and pull in if you like that low back stretch a little bit more. And then hands back to the front. And again, bend your knees slightly, tuck your chin just slightly. And starting at the bottom of the spine, wind your way slowly back up. Shoulders back and down, and again into mountain pose. So we work the spine at six directions. Just feel the, all that energy flowing through your body from the warm-up. And then bring your hands to your heart. Palms just gently pressed together. Look at them. Inhale them toward the ceiling. So extend your arms straight. Oh, sorry. And then pull your thumbs back and keep looking at them, lifting your heart, coming into as much of a back bend as you want. Exhale, hands to your heart, pivoting forward, pivot again at the hips, and come over into ragdoll. Just hang a moment, letting those hands go toward the floor as far as they want to go. Lift the back of your body through the sitting bones. Slide your hands up under your knees on your shins and just press gently. Palms flat on your shins, elbows straight, knees straight, and again, spine straight. Just keep looking down toward the floor. So push the sitting bones one way and the crown the other way. Stretch it out. Shoulder blades where? Toward your waist always. And then exhale back in the rug doll. And again, one more winding up, just slowly coming to the top. Feel all those bones of your spine moving into place, shoulders back and down, and again, into mountain toes. As you get there, spread your toes and do a balance practice. So pick your favorite balance foot, either one is fine. Lift the toes, you don't want the toes gripping, that gives you less base of support. So all the way across the balls of the toes, the base of the toes, 
and into the heel, get that whole foot connected down. Spread the toes out as you put them back down, but don't grip. Make sure your knee is going toward your second toe, and then straighten your knee, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder lined up. And make sure your core is activated. So ribs toward your spine and then up toward your heart with the shoulders and shoulder blades going down. Just feel that support through your spine, crown toward the ceiling. And then sink into that foot through the whole base of the toes and heel evenly. And bring your other foot up. So you don't want it crossing over, so don't roll that leg out. Roll it slightly in and just bring the foot up. You can leave it a little bit down or more or pull it up toward your heart, however much you want. And then we're going to work the ankles so we don't get old and fall. So just circle the ankles around both ways. You need to step out and in, just do what you need to do, just following the same process. Flex and pull in a couple times to straighten the ankle out and put that foot back down. <clears throat> Take a moment, transfer what worked, improve the rest. So again, toes straight ahead, knee going toward your toes, everything aligned all the way up, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, core activated with those ribs toward your spine and up, sitting bones, shoulder blades down, ground right to the ceiling. Sink evenly into that foot. Make sure those toes are spreading, not gripping, and then bring your other foot up. So again, a little or more, or toward your heart. Make sure it's not crossing over. Find your place. And even if that foot is still low by the ground, circle the ankles both directions. Flex and point before you put the foot back down and back into mountain pose. Just take a moment there, close your eyes, exhale that stress from your balance practice, and again, hands to your heart. Inhale, hands toward the ceiling, thumbs back, keep looking at them as you go into your back bend. Swan dive, so bring your arms out, palms toward the floor, right at shoulder level, shoulder blades still toward your waist, pivot at your hips, Get everything stretched and straight and drop into ragdoll. Pull it a little deeper if you like that back stretch. Tuck in your chin and then pull your head toward your legs. Release the hands down toward your feet. And then bend your knees slightly. Bring your fingers under the bottoms of your feet and the toes into the heel of your palm. And then see if you can straighten your elbows and knees, and your back. So you're stretching out with that back of your body parallel to the floor as much as you can. Lift the sitting bones, get a good stretch on your legs. This one's called Gorilla. And then release your hands from under your feet, tuck in your chin, bend your knees slightly. And again, we'll roll slowly up, shoulders back and down into mountain pose. Take a moment as you're in mountain pose, just feeling your body. We'll do a chair for those quad warm-ups. So bring your arms out to the sides, shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, hands right above your shoulders. Keep the shoulders, shoulder blades square toward your waist. Everything straight. And then we're gonna push the spinning bones, the hips back slightly, bend your knees straight Toward your toes, but not beyond. And then just sink into your squat chair pose, like you're sitting on a chair with those sitting bones going back behind you. So you can come as far as parallel to the floor with those thigh bones. Keep your arms by your ears, head reaching toward your fingers, sitting bones going straight down. So your spine still should be nice and straight. Take a breath. Just sink maybe a little deeper. Don't go too far though for your knees if you have knee issues. You want to make sure you're protecting them. Stretch out through your fingertips. Lift your sitting bones. Straighten your knees. Bring your hands down toward your toes. And just hang a rag doll. Take a moment there. Just tucking in the chin slightly. Lift the sitting bones. Stretch the back of your legs. And then bend your knees again, bring your arms back by your ears, everything straight, shoulders toward your waist. 
and knees bent toward but not beyond your toes, sitting bones way behind you. Maybe those thigh bones are a little bit more parallel to the floor this time. And then fingertips lean, come all the way back up, standing in extended mountain. Shoulders are down. Turn your hands out, down to shoulder level, all the way to your sides. Take a moment, mountain pose. So mountain pose is the basic standing posture. It should feel really natural, having your weight evenly on both feet, through the base of the toes, hip, balls of the feet, and heels. Spread the toes, take a breath. Exhale, tension. And then, okay, let's step to the end of the mat in mountain pose. We'll warm up those hip flexors for you, Vince. So shoulders back and down, hands to your heart. Look at them as you bring them toward the ceiling. Another little back bend, as much or as little as you'd like, looking at your thumbs, lifting your heart. Exhale, follow the hands to your heart. And again, pivot at your hips. Exhale on over into ragdoll. Slide those hands up under your knees, on your shins, come into that halfway up stretch. So elbows, knees, and spine are straight. You're looking at the floor, keeping that neck nice and straight. And then bend your knees. Exhale, hands down under your shoulders next to your feet on the floor. Fingertips down, palms down. Or you can put books or something, blocks there to raise the floor if you need to or want to. And then we're going to step the right foot, a good long step back, coming into a lunge position. So front knee stays above your ankle. Again, the knee going toward that second toe, never beyond. The heel is pressing back behind you, and you're letting those hips come down toward the floor as much as they want. Hands under the shoulders, positioning you, not really supporting. And just whole body as straight as you can. So ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, everything lined up as much as you can in this lunge position. And then bring your knee down toward the floor. You can put a pad under it if you need to. Try to go slightly above the knee, not right on the kneecap. And slide the toes back. And just feel that hip flexor on the front of that thigh stretch a little bit more. So you can stay there. Spread your toes on that front foot. Just relax through the hips straight down. If you want a little more stretch on that hip flexor, slide the toes further back slightly. Bring one hand and then the other to the front knee, head up toward the ceiling, and then just sink again down through the hip, feeling it stretch a little bit more. Take a breath. Exhale. The more you exhale, the more things release and stretch. And then we're bringing the hands back down under your shoulders on the floor next to that front foot. Tuck your toes under, slide out to the base of the toes, and push back through the heels. So the knee is straight again. Everything is nice and straight in that lunge position, maybe even a little bit more straight than it was before. Take a breath, push off from that foot, that foot exhaling into red dog. Feet next to each other, just hanging. Relax through that hip that we were just stretching. Feel that release. And then hands together. Inhale and slowly hands to your heart, shoulders down. Inhale, hands toward the ceiling, thumbs coming back. Give yourself a nice front of your body stretch, lifting your heart. And of course, we're going to do the same thing with the other leg to balance the body. I'm just turning around so you can see again what I'm doing. So there you are in your back bend, chest lifted, hands back, looking at your thumbs. Exhale, moving at your hips, again, coming all the way over into your bone. Just hang a moment, lifting your sitting bones, breathing. Slide your hands up under your knees into that halfway up stretch, getting everything long and straight. Elbows, knees, and spine. Take a breath. Exhale, bend your knees, hands under your shoulders. And step the left foot a good big step back into lunge position. 
So once more, toes are going straight ahead, knee is right above your ankle with that knee pointed toward that second toe. Hands are still just positioning, not really supporting you. Getting as straight into that lunge as you can. Heel back, round forward, ankle, knee, hip, shoulders lined up as much as you can. So you don't want to be up with the hips toward the ceiling. You want to be sinking them down toward the floor. Spread your front toes. And then bring that knee behind you down. You can pad under it. Roll onto the top of the knee above it. Not right on the kneecap if you can. Slide the toes back on that that left leg. Make sure your front knee stays above the ankle, not spreading out or falling in. And again, when you're ready, you can bring your hands up to the front knee, round toward the ceiling, hips even, and then we'll let them both sink toward the floor, giving that hip flexor on the left leg a little more stretch, as much or as little as you need or want. Take a breath. Again, just exhaling to release the tension and allow that whole area to stretch a little bit more effectively. Shoulders relaxed, crown high, chest a little bit forward, and don't forget to breathe. And when you're ready, bring your hands down next to that front foot right under your shoulders. Tuck the toes behind you, come onto the base of the toes, pressing back through the heel, coming into that lunge as straight and stretched as you can. Check that front knee, make sure it's still above your ankle. And again, pushing off, exhaling into ragdoll. Just hang for a brief moment, letting those sitting bones rise, releasing that hip flexor area that we were stretching, and slowly hands together. Coming to your heart, shoulders still down, away from your ears as you bring your hands once more to the ceiling and back into the back end, looking at your thumbs. Exhale, hands to your heart and releasing into mountain pose once more. So take a moment as you get back into your mountain pose, spread your toes, relax your shoulders. Feel that core, make sure it's still activated and supporting you. Round to the ceiling. Take a moment and breathe. And we'll step wide. So bring your feet as wide apart as you want. So when you start, again, you want the knees and toes and shoulders and hips facing the front. You want the toes spreading out, not gripping. You want the Sitting bones going toward the floor, keeping the hips open, and the shoulders right above your hips, crown toward the ceiling, core activated and supporting your spine. Take a moment and breathe. We'll bring the arms up to shoulder level. Keep the shoulders, shoulder blades toward your waist, and fingertips for reaching out. And then we're going to turn the feet. So as we turn the feet, the thing to remember is you want to turn from the hip joint so that your whole leg turns, not just your foot. So turn the whole front foot all the way to the side. So if you've got a mat, you want the outside of your toes about parallel to the side of the mat, the knee going toward the second toe, but you want those hips to stay open. We're gonna go into warrior two. And then for this back foot, you wanna angle the toes forward and the heel back. Again, the whole foot, the whole leg turns so that the foot and the knee are still parallel to each other. Take a moment there, spread the toes. The further apart your legs are, the deeper you'll go into your squat position for this warrior. Keep the hips right above, your shoulders right above the hips, everything square to the front. Now we're gonna bend this front knee right above the ankle and just sink your hips straight down toward the floor. If your legs are further apart, the thigh bone will go further toward parallel to the floor. You want to look at your knee and make sure you can see your big toe. So not all the toes and not none of the toes, just the big toe. So the knee is going toward that second toe, not spreading out or hanging, falling in. And then you want to check to make sure that 
It can be a little behind your ankle if you want, or right above the ankle, but don't push it too far toward the toes or you overwork the knee. Get as much weight into that back foot as the front foot, so into that little toe side of the back foot especially, really pushing out through that hole so that the weight on both feet is the same, even though it seems like you should be leaning slightly forward. You don't want to lean forward, you want to sink straight down. Take a moment there, getting everything aligned and balanced. Spread your toes, relax your shoulders, reach those fingertips out. And then if you feel comfortable there, you can slightly turn your whole body through the spine and look out over that front hand. Make sure the hands are still at shoulder level. To help do that, you can turn the palms up and then back down. That tends to release some of the tightness in the shoulders. And then straighten the front knee. Turn your face and your toes back to the front. And you're in energized star position. So just from your heart, reach out through those five points. And release the hands for a moment. We're going to do the warrior to the other side to balance the body. So again, spreading your toes. Evenly sinking into your feet. Hips nice and open. Shoulders, shoulder blades down, arms at shoulder level. Turn your foot parallel to the side of the mat, knee going towards your toes. Heel back, toes forward on that back foot. But keep that hip back so you're still facing hips and shoulders to where you started. Take a breath, exhale, bend the front knee right above your ankle. Check that you're not leaning in or out, going toward that second toe. You should be able to see just the big toe. Sink down as deeply into that as you want. Make sure you've got weight on that back foot as much as the front one. Take a breath. Shoulders, shoulder blades down. And again, if you're comfortable there, you can rotate your whole spine, turning to look over the front fingertips. You can turn the palms up and down to make sure that shoulders are released and the hands are still at shoulder level. Knees are Straight on that back leg, knee is bent right above your ankle on the front leg, weight into both feet evenly. Take a breath. And then turning your face, or straightening your knee, turn your face and feet to the front, back into your star position. Take a moment there, and pivot forward, exhale, stretch it out, drop the arms to the floor. Take a moment, and relax. And then bend your knees, sitting bones behind you, bring your arms up, so a wide leg squat, coming back all the way to standing, stretch your arms toward the ceiling, knees straight, hands out, back to your sides, into mountain pose. Take a breath, hands to your heart. Inhale, hands up, swan dive forward, Pivot over, exhale, and come all the way to the floor. Hips back to your heels, hands, palms up, forehead toward the floor, into child's pose. And you can stay there for our relaxation, or you can sit up, slide off, bring your feet to the end of the mat, activate your core, and just slowly roll onto the floor. For our final relaxation, take a breath. Just let your body sink. So hands or palms up near your sides, shoulders down toward the floor, whatever position you're in. Take a moment if you're in corpse position to bring your toes toward each other and then let them just relax. So no flopping apart totally with the feet, just a little bit to up toward the ceiling. Toes, or if you're in child's pose, just relax. Deep breath. As you exhale, just let your body soften, sinking into that surface beneath you. Breathing deep, exhaling tension, letting everything go. As your body grows heavy, just let it sink into that earth support. Exhale and let your body release completely. 
relaxing every muscle. So kind of tense and tighten through your hips, through your legs, crunch the toes up and then crunch them together. Take a breath, hold it, and then exhale Let everything in your lower body relax even more. Take your thumbs into your palms, make a fist, stretch those arms straight, pushing the fist down toward your feet, tensing and tightening through your hands and arms and shoulders. Take a breath and hold it a breath. Exhale, let it soften and everything sink, just dropping to the floor, sinking into that earth embrace. Crunch your face together, tighten your chest, tighten your jaw, hold that breath, then exhale, soften and sink. Let your whole body just release completely. Take a breath. As you exhale, just let thoughts of your body release from your awareness. As you do, other thoughts will come to your mind. Know that it's the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, let the thoughts disappear as easily as your breath. Thoughts flowing in, flowing out, disappearing like your breath, floating like a cloud beyond the horizon, out of sight, out of mind. No need to remember the past or anticipate the future. Just let the content of the thoughts disappear. Flowing in and flowing out, like the breath, like the waves, like the clouds. Body growing heavier, sinking into the earth, let thoughts of your body go. Any other thoughts, just let them float away, light, unnoticed, unneeded. And as you breathe deeply, allow your awareness to release your body and your mind. Just turn that awareness inward, finding the peace within. Feel your body with peace. Feel your mind with peace. Take a few moments to be peace. Of course, if you want to keep relaxing even longer, take as much time as you have today. And it's time to get ready for the rest of your day. Just begin drawing energy and awareness back with the breath, moment to the room, to your body. And as you breathe more deeply, just begin moving your body gently however feels good for you. And as you breathe more deeply, stretch more completely whenever you're ready for that Final yoga hug of appreciation. Push your sitting bones towards your heels, back to the floor. Bring your heels in towards your hips and draw your knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around however feels good for you today. Give yourself that appreciative yoga hug. Letting your body know you appreciate its work in yoga today and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, bring your head feet to the floor, roll over to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.